Hi, welcome to the Center Maths video series on the basics of number theory. Today we're going to be going over Euler's phi function, Euler's theorem. Uh, so if we, the definition of the phi function is let n be a positive integer and the function is denoted by the Greek letter phi. And so the phi of n is defined to be the number of positive integers not exceeding n that are relatively prime to n. For example, the phi of 3 is equal to 2 because the number of positive integers not exceeding 3 but are relatively prime to 3 are just 1 and 2, and there are 2. Another example, the phi of 4, this is also 2 because only 1 and 3 are relatively prime to 4. Um, the phi of 7 is 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are all relatively prime to 7. Uh, if you notice, if you keep going like this, calculating all of them, you'll see that if p is a prime number, then the phi of p is equal to p minus 1. This is because the number of integers that are not exceeding p are p minus 1, they are p minus 1, and they are all relatively prime to p. So this makes it easy to calculate the phi of really large prime numbers. Uh, the phi of 29 is 28. Uh, that, so it's easy to calculate large prime numbers, but sometimes if you want to calculate the phi of large composite numbers, you don't want to be writing out all the numbers and figure out which ones are relatively prime. So we have other formulas. So one way to calculate the phi of a composite number is that if we let p be prime and a is an integer, then the phi of p to the a is equal to p to the a minus p a to the 1. For example, the phi of 49, that can be written as 7 squared, which is 7 squared minus 7, so it's 42. Another method to calculate the phi of a function. So if we let m and n be relatively prime integers, then, the, um, then we have the phi of m and n can be broken up into the phi of m times the phi of n. For example, to find the phi of 36, 4 and, four and 9 are relatively prime. So we can find the phi of 4 times the phi of n. You can just, those are pretty low numbers, so you can just um, count them, like 4 is, 1 and 2. You can either count 9 or use the method we talked above. So 9 is 3 squared. So it's 3 squared minus 3, which is 6. So you have 2 times 6, and it's the phi of 36 is 12. And another method to calculate the phi of a large number is if you let n equal um, p to the 1 to the a to 1, this is all the prime factorization of the positive integer n, then you can calculate the phi of n by multiplying out n times 1 minus 1 over p1 times 1 minus 1 over p2 all the way through its, um, all its prime factors. We'll do an example. We want to calculate the phi of 100. We'll break 100 up into its prime factorization, which is 5 squared times 2 squared. Uh, 
That's 100 times 1 minus 1 half times 1 minus 1 fifth, which is 40. And now that we know how to properly calculate the phi of a function and find the phi of a number, now that, now that we know how to properly find the phi of a number, we'll talk about Euler's method, Euler's theorem. The Euler's theorem says that if m is a positive integer and the greatest common divisor of a and m is equal to 1, which means they're co-prime, then a to the 5m is congruent to 1 modulo m. We'll go through some examples. Uh, you can use Euler's theorem, like Fermat's little theorem, to solve linear congruences or find the inverse or find the least positive residue. So we, if we're asked to solve the linear congruence, 3x is congruent to 7 modulo 10, we can use Euler's theorem. And Euler's theorem tells us that 3 to the 5 of 10 is congruent to 1 modulo 10. To find the 5 of 10, 10 is low enough where you can just count the integers that are relatively prime to 10. But if you want to practice with the other methods we discussed, you can break up 10 into its prime factorization, which is just 2 times 5. And then you will get 4. Um, so then we have to multiply both sides of the incongruence by 3 to the third. So we'll have 3 to the fourth on this side. And we know that 3 to the fourth is congruent to 1. So we're left with x is congruent to 3 to the third times 7, and we'll just rewrite that as 3 to the second times 21. 3 to the second is 9, and 21, when divided by 10, it leaves a remainder of 1. So we have that x is congruent to 9, and a 9 is our solution. You can also use Euler's theorem to find the least positive residue. So if we were asked to find the least positive residue of 40 to the 128th power, modulo 49, Euler's theorem tells us that 40 to the 5 49 is congruent to 1 modulo 49. We have to calculate the phi of 49. We can use one of the methods we discussed earlier. The phi of 49 is the phi of 7 squared, in which so we can say 7 squared minus 7, and we get 42. Now we know that 40 to the 42 is congruent to 1 modulo 49. Just rewrite 128 as uh, 42 times 3 plus 2, so we'll have 40 to the 42nd to the third power times 40 to the second, and we know that 40 to the 42nd is congruent to 1. So we're left with 40 to the second. 40 is congruent to negative 9 modulo 49, and then negative 9 squared is 81. And when 81 is divided by 49, we're left with a remainder of 32. And we can't reduce that anymore, so 32 is our final answer. Um, thank you for watching. If you like this video, be sure to check out our other videos in the basics of number theory. Also, check out our blog and visit centerofmath.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you.